let me give an introduction regarding the SAS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> SAS stands for Statistical Analysis Systems. SAS stands for Statistical Analysis Systems. And it was first launched in year 1976 by Jim Goodnight and his colleagues. They developed this particular software especially regarding the R&D domain. Whenever we think about research and development domain, there we used to have very huge amount of data. So if you want to make a decision about the particular data, then we must need a software. So the main requirement to develop the SAS is nothing but doing the analysis. Of course, later they have upgraded the software, especially from the year 1993. Earlier, the SAS is used only for doing the analysis, but especially from the year 1993, the SAS is used to support data entry, data management, data addition, etc. Earlier, the use of SAS is only doing analysis, but apart from that, we can proceed with the report generation presentation, managing the information, proceeding with data entry, etc. Et because of the reason we can also abbreviate the SAS as systems and softwares, apart from the statistical analysis systems. Okay. Apart from the statistical analysis systems, we can also abbreviate it as systems and softwares. So let us think about the definition. What is SAS? SAS is a powerful fourth generation programming language, a combination of different software products. SAS is a programming language and at the same time it is a combination of different different software products. So what we can do with these programming language concepts as well as with the software products is we can do variety of products like data retrieving. We can proceed with data entry, data management, data analysis, data presentation, reporting the data exporting the data. We can say so. What we can do with the SAS programming language concepts along with the software products is we can do variety of works like this. Here we can proceed with data retrieving. Remember that SAS is faster in data retrieving. SAS is faster in data retrieving. I mean to say we have a table with nearly 1,000 records. Out of 1,000 records, I want to get only 5 records where a specific condition is satisfied. In that particular situation, if we have taken SAS, within seconds, the SAS will search for those 5 records out of 1,000 and it will try to come with only those where the condition is satisfied. So SAS is faster in data retrieving and here we can proceed with data entry. That means whenever we have the requirement to create table with our own information, we can proceed with data entry. We can create the table with our own information. And here we can proceed with management. We can control the information that is present in the table. We have a table, we want to add new columns to the table. Sometimes we want to delete existing columns from the table. Sometimes we want to add the records to the table. Sometimes we want to delete the records to the table. And let us say we have duplicate records in a particular table. So I just want to identify the duplicate records and I want to delete them. Okay. And we have missing values in a particular table. I just want to search for the missing values and I want to replace the missing values with meaningful information. 
all this kind of work will be called as data management. And here we have data analysis. We can analyze the data. As I said, the prime use of science is nothing but analysis. Here we can do different, different types of analysis according to the requirement. And we can proceed with presentation. Here we can generate different, different types of reports. We can generate detailed report, summary report, table of reports, listings, plots, charts, everything. And we have complete control over the presentation. If you want to change the report of the font size, you want to change the font size, or if you want to change the font style, okay. If you want to change their color, we have complete control over it. And here we can import as well as export the data. Remember that SAS will support almost all platforms like that file, data file, ASCII file, ANSI file, SIM file. So whatever it may be, we can easily import and export the data. And at the same time, it will support all the application files like Excel, Access, Lotus, everything. And apart from that, it will support all the relational databases also, like Oracle, Teradata, Sybase, SQL Server, DB2, etc., etc. So whatever it may be, can interact with all of them for exporting as well as importing the data also. Okay. And SAS is a 33 different tools. It is a combination of 33 different tools. We have SAS, Access, SAS, Base, SAS, Collect, SAS, Report, SAS, Graph, SAS, SQL, SAS, Micro, SAS is a combination of totally 33 different tools. So whenever we have the requirement to do something, internally those concerned tools will become active and they used to do that particular work. And remember that in SAS each and every work will be done, uh, each and every work will be done by different different tools. Suppose if you want to get the external data into the SAS, Regarding that, we have a specific tool. Once we got the data into the SAS, we have to do the data analysis. Regarding that, we have a specific tool. Once we have generated the report, we want to export it. Regarding that, we have one specific tool. Like that, for each and every work, we used to have different, different types of tools. Like that, the SAS is a combination of totally 33 different tools. And the SAS is used to support nearly 46 domains. SAS will support nearly 46 domains. Like sales, marketing, finance, banking, France, marine, agriculture, telephone industry, insurance, stock exchange. We can say so on. Wherever we have the strong requirement of management, analysis and presentation. Wherever we have strong requirement of management, analysis, in all those different, different domains, we can work with SAS. And we can categorize, first let us see the features. Let us think about the features of SAS. Here we have program, SAS integration, and SAS analysis. About SAS program, I already said it is a programming language and it is a syntax based language. That means the SAS was built on rules. 
the environment to do a particular work to do a particular work we must follow the rules so here we will see what are the rules what are its advantages what are its disadvantages what we can do with the programming what we cannot do with the programming everything and here we have inspiration here we will see how the SAS is used to interact with different different operating systems as well as databases remember that SAS is platform independent that means we can work with SAS on Windows, Unix, IBM mainframes, OpenBMS, whatever operating system. At the same time, here it will support all the relational databases like Oracle, Terabita, Sybase, SQL Server, MySQL, DB2. So here we will see how the SAS is used to interact with different different operating systems as well as databases. And here we have small analysis. I already said the main purpose to develop the SAS itself is doing the analysis. So whatever may be the kind of analysis requirements that we have, it may be mathematical analysis, statistical analysis, technical, operational, whatever it may be. We can proceed with all that. And here we have layers. After the work that is present in the SAS, we can categorize the SAS into three different layers like technical layer, functional layer, and techno-functional layer. Technical means here we will do everything by writing a code or program. If you are trying to do anything by writing your pro code, we call as technical. Functional means here we will not write any program, but we will work with graphical user interfaces, GUIs. And at that time, we will work with the Windows also. So whatever we are trying to do by writing a program, we will do the same thing without writing the program also. And apart from that, we have techno function layer. The name itself indicates it is a combination of technical as well as functional aspects. So here we have some part of programming and some part of functional layers. So this was the general introduction regarding the SAS. Now let us see how we will the SAS in the clinical domain. Whenever a pharmaceutical industry is trying to develop the drug, initially they will go for a lot of research in order to identify the chemical compounds. Once they got their required chemical compound, primarily they will apply the particular chemical compound on the animals which will preclinical drug. Suppose if they have succeeded in the preclinical trial research, then they have to send that research information to the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, as IND, Investigational New Drug. Then the FDA will review the Investigational New Drug document and satisfy it. Then it will give the permission to conduct the clinical trials. Clinical trials means that there will be a compound on the humans. We can say it is nothing but a research study which is used to develop new drugs or which is used to upgrade the existing drugs. It will be conducted by different different phases like clinical phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, If you think about clinical phase 1, there the number of participants are very few, especially like 20 to 30. And here in general, they used to take the healthy workers.
and they will do the research for nearly one month and they will mainly concentrate on the safety. Suppose if they have succeeded in their particular research, then they will proceed with the clinical trial phase two. Remember that nearly 70% of chemicals will pass phase If you think about clinical trial phase two, there the number of participants are nothing but 200 to 300. And here we used to have target deceased persons. Of course, they will do it for at, at, at least one year and they think about the efficacy, effectiveness of the drug. Nearly 30% of can pass that phase to the next phase. There we have used to have in cultural phase 3 where the number of participants are 2%. And of course here also we used to have dark deceased persons and they will conduct research for years and they will think about safety and efficacy also. By conducting the trial, they will monitor everything and they will maintain their data in the databases. So we have to information, this entire research information to the FDA as NDA, new drug application. Now, SAS will review the new drug application and if it was satisfied, then it will give the permission to release that particular chemical as a drug into the market. Once it has been released into the market, then we will think about long-term effects. If a person is using our chemical comp number of years, what are the side effects that he got? Generally, this will be the drug development process, but when it comes to the SAS, SAS is mainly used in the clinical trial phase 2 and phase 3, and occasionally used in the clinical trial phase 1 and phase 2, sorry, phase 1 and phase 4. So, let us see how we can implement the SAS in the clinical domain. Here, first we will proceed with data accessing. As I said, whenever they were conducting the trial, they will maintain the data in the databases. So from the data, we will access, from the particular source, we will access the data. As I said, it may be a file or database. In SAS, we have different, different techniques to access the external data into the SAS. And once we got data into the SAS, here we have data validation. It will check, that means we have to check whether the data is valid or not. We will always try to check whether the data is accurate or not by the help of a document called SOP, Standard Operating Procedures. According to that, we will do the validation and then we will proceed with data cleansing. That means during the validation, if you found anything wrong, if you found any duplicate records or if we have identified any wrong entries, we will try to rectify all of them by the data cleansing. For both cleansing as well as validation also, we have different different techniques. Then here we will create the analysis data set. We will prepare the data set for doing the analysis on it. Why? Because always there is no need to analyze the entire table. We have the requirement to analyze only few columns or few records. So once we have created the analysis data set, then we will proceed with the analysis according to the SAP. Here SAP stands for statistic according to the SAP statistical analysis plan, then we will think about the presentation that may be table or report or detailed report or summary report, whatever it Finally, here we have report validation. We will check whether the report, whatever we have generated, is valid or not. So once it is over, 
then we will send the traditional information to the okay, concern clients. Okay. So this will be the NAS in the clinical domain. And this is the complete words overview regarding the SAS. What is SAS? What are definition, tools, domains, features, layers, and finally implementation of SAS in the clinical domain. So I will stop here. Do you have questions? Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay then. Then I will stop here. Okay.